That old devil moon. Message from Starfleet, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. The Enterprise will proceed to the Alpha Proxima system. While the indigenous race on Proxima 3 has not reached a technological level commensurate with entering the Federation, and therefore under the protection of the prime directive of non-interference, we do maintain a discrete monitoring satellite. It has picked up activity from an asteroid in an elliptical orbit. You are to investigate without interfering with life on the planet. According to the library computer, the Alpha Proxima system has five planets and an asteroid belt. A large asteroid is heading towards the inner planets and should pass close by Proxima 3. It passes through the interior of the system once every 200 years. The people of Proxima 3 call it Scythe, the same name as their god of war. God of war, Mr. Spock? Isn't that a bit surprising from a people whose technology matches 20th century Earth? Considering the level of warfare during that century, I'm surprised that it is Earth that did not have a god of war. In any case, about a millennium ago, Proxima III suffered a globally devastating war. Blew themselves back to the Stone Age, Mr. Spock? Late Bronze Age, Anson. They rebuilt their world in half the time it had taken to get there originally. But the Armageddon was mythologized as a battle between the Sofs and Lucas. In that war, the planet was raised, and all the gods died except Sai. He had rained fury down upon the world, then went off on a long dance of victory. His return is a time for worldwide soul-searching and atonement. And Scythe returns, and our monitoring station picks up activity. It would seem that we should proceed to Alpha Proxima and scan Scythe. standard order. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. Captain, Mr. Scott wishes to speak with you. Mr. Scott? Hi, we've had some slight problems with the transporters. We didn't notice anything beaming down. Just a glitch in the main transporter program. Mr. Kyle is loading a bag up and we're performing tests. The transporters will be down for about an hour. That will still give us plenty of time, Scotty. I know. I have the lads in engineering doing a complete overhaul of the ship systems. Good, Mr. Scott. I'll keep you posted. Kirk out. As expected, Captain. The source of power emanations lies beyond that door. A power source that has lasted millennia and endured major catastrophes. That's fascinating, Mr. Spock. Do you have Vulcan blood, Ensign? No, sir. The rocks have a high quantity of triphosphorus silver in them. Unremarkable except for low-grade power emanations from the door area. I cannot get readings from this rain. It's what I was afraid of, Jim. The thin atmosphere of this moon doesn't provide enough protection from cosmic rays. We shouldn't stay here any more than a few hours. You retrieve a rock. You retrieve a rock. What is it, Scotty? There is some sort of virus in the main computer. Our phasers and tractor beams have been disabled, and there's no way we're getting them back in three hours. There goes our backup plan. Do what you can, Mr. Scott. Aye, I will, Captain. I may yet have a trick or two that I can pull, but don't count on any miracles. Isolate that virus. That's your number one priority. That it is, Captain. We'll keep you informed. Scott out. The door still appears to be in operating condition. 
There is power running to the keypad. There is power running. I see you deduced that 10200 in the Lucre's base 3 was equal to their sacred number 99. Report, Scotty. How are things going? About as badly as a kilt in a blast furnace, Captain. Wait a minute. Lieutenant Nuhura has some news for you. The virus came from our sensor sweep of the moon's computers. We believe we have analyzed the memory sectors it attacked. Well done, Uhura. I wish I could take credit for it. It was Mr. Kyle who found the pattern. We are attacking it with antivirus programs. Computer science sounds more like medicine every day. If we had a doctor as good with computers as you are with patients, we'd be having a lot fewer problems. Finally, someone who appreciates me. Keep working at it, Uhura. Kirk out. A computer terminal, Captain. It uses the Lucre alphabet. I think I can decipher it. This door is similar to the one on the outside of the secure lock, except that it has not weathered over the years. Electrical panels indicate the keypad on the right controls the door. This keypad is fully functional and controls the door. Its entry code is in base 3. Damn it, Jim, I'm a surgeon, not a... We're safe from the cosmic... The console reports the following. Welcome to Orbital Missile Base. Code name, Psy. This base has been operational for the past week. It has completed one successful fire mission. Estimation of success is at 22 over 100. 22 percent? That's very low. Hardly something to brag about. Doctor, in base 3, 22 divided by 100 is equivalent to 8 out of 9, or 88 percent. I would think that quite satisfactory, given this base's probable mission of destroying the soft forces on Proxtry. It says the base has been operational for a week, but this has been here for a thousand years. If the Lukers built this base with a clock that told the time by measuring the moon's rotational speed, or the gravitational forces generated by Proxtry and the sun, the computer may have calculated only a week of time has passed since its first action. I might be able to learn more with another look at the console. There is a substantial amount of data here, but in summary, Scythe was created by the Lukers as a launching platform for missiles to keep the Softs subjugated to their influence. The Softs managed to infiltrate the base. However, their actions triggered Scythe's auto-attack mechanisms and initiated a holocaust that nearly annihilated the planet. One soft strike did, in fact, hit the moon and deflected it from its orbit. It has been dormant since then. So why has the base been activated again? Given the damage to the moon, its slow rotation and orbit, it has never realized the war is over. On this pass, for the first time, it has detected radio wave transmissions from Proxtry. Because it does not recognize them, it assumes the softs are still active. Its transmission to the planet, I would assume, was some sort of a check beacon to see if it should continue its mission. Jim, let's return to the ship and blast this place to destroy its weapons. Doctor, this moon is a god to the people down there. If we destroy it, we will violate the Prime Directive. Spock is right, Bones. Spock, what are the chances that we could decode the transmission and send a stop code to the base? In trinary or decimal? Spock! 1.327 million to one. Provided the archaeological studies about Lucre's languages are correct, our other option is to get into this base and see if we can bring the computers down. Fascinating. If the Federation language studies were correct, the ideograph for the word scythe in the Lucre's language is the 17th symbol in their alphabet that corresponds with 122 in base 3.
Captain, we have a cure for the computer virus. Well done, Uhura. I modify Cothral C to exclusively attack the Lucre virus. They annihilated each other, Captain. Fascinating, Lieutenant. The Klingons aren't going to be happy to learn that they helped us. How about the phasers and tractor beams? We may get the tractor beams online in time, Captain. I'm afraid even the backup phaser transmission codes were affected. We could destroy some missiles manually, but if this complex decides to launch more than 10 missiles at a time... Understood. The ball is in our court. We'll give it our best shot. Kirk out. This door is made from remarkably dense alloys. Even our most powerful phaser rifle or welder would not be able to penetrate it. The thing must be almost as tough as a starship hull. Indeed, Ensign, and considerably thinner. A remarkable achievement in metallurgical engineering. This panel has a slot in it rather than a keypad. The slot bears traces of triphosphoric silver, and power is currently running to it. I am recording the pattern of this lock into my tricorder. Circuits and atmosphere pumps are hidden in the walls. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Circuits and atmosphere pumps are hidden in the walls. Nothing to report, Captain. Circuits and atmosphere... Can't say I like the decor. The Lukers did not leave behind many examples of their architecture. I can see why. Captain, with the 3 kAG content of the surface rocks and the tricorder scan of the pattern inside the lock, I believe the laser drill can be used to fashion the ID card needed to open the sealed door in the other chamber. I used the key card pattern scanned from the lock to program the drill. It should now be able to make a template of the key card in the rock. This appears to be the brain of Scythe. There are two identical but isolated computers that communicate with a third, which controls the launch of missiles. Readings indicate an extremely high radiation level beyond those doors. It would be fatal to proceed beyond them. This computer directly controls the missile launch system. There is no way to interface with it directly, but the other two computers are accessible. This computer is functional and performing an average 0.75 million operations per second.
this computer is functional and performing an average 1.2 million operations per second. They may be twins, but they are not identical. It appears they are out of sync, Captain. I have to assume the Alpha unit has a virus, which is using up an incredible amount of computing time. They report different optimum launch times, which is right. Given the elliptical orbit and the range at which they will pass Proxtry, the Omega unit is correct, but the window is very narrow. A variation of minutes will mean the missiles run out of fuel and fall harmlessly into the sun. Can you reprogram the Lucas computer to give us that time, Mr. Spock? Reprogramming an old alien computer is not simple, Captain. The odds against success are 10,221 to 1 against. Too bad all Omega here couldn't just take a sick day and miss the firing. Because the two machines are isolated, the virus did not spread from one to the other. If we could only bridge them. The connector snaps into place. Welcome to Side Operations Center, Alpha Unit. Estimated time to optimal launch range. Save new game. Replace previous game. Center, Omega Unit. Estimated time to optimal launch range is 1.54 hours. Adjusted. The launch missiles will run out of fuel before they reach Proxtry. They will drift into the sun and burn up. Kirk to Enterprise, how are the transporters, Scotty? They're operational again, Captain. We're ready to bring you back at any time. Bring us home. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Proxima 3 and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. Hard to believe that Earth came so close to the brink itself. Vulcans, too. Both, in the end, looked into the abyss and came to the only logical conclusion. Logic? Humans? I'm dreaming, Jim. Sometimes it is harder and braver to make peace rather than war. Sounds like emotion had its part to play in a positive sense, too. I don't know about you, but I'd like to bid an emotional goodbye to Alpha Proxima myself. Take us out of orbit, Mr. Sir. 